to the NFL Contest Show. It's week 12 of the NFL season. I hope everybody had a safe and fun Thanksgiving. Uh, last week, week 11, had a great week, went 4-1. Uh, a couple of uh, games had to sweat it out right to the end, uh, particularly that Pittsburgh Steelers win. But hey, I won't apologize for being lucky. I'm going to take the points and just keep on moving on to week 12. Uh, currently, sitting at a 38-16-1 record, tied for ninth place in the uh, Circa Millions. So uh, from this point on, every game matters. Every week, every game, got to be on point. Try to get as many uh, points as I can to get myself to that total of 60, the goal that I set before the season started, and see if I can't end up in that first place $1 million prize. Uh, the sports books really uh, put together a great uh, lineup this week. There's no double-digit favorites on the card. Uh, a lot of these games are right around three, three and a half. So basically this week it's uh, deciding which team is going to win the game. Should also cover the spread. So they really uh, made it difficult. But, you know, like I said, it's with seven weeks left in the NFL season, it's only going to get harder from here. Every game matters. So let's see which five games I like for week 12 of the NFL season. So the first game that I like is the Houston Texans. Minus two and a half at home, taking on the New York Jets. I just think this is two teams that are, you know, neither one of these teams are very good, but I'll take the team with the better quarterback, and that's the Houston Texans. I've been a fan of Tyrod Taylor's for a while. I was touting him in week one when uh, before he got injured, uh, and I just think that he makes this Houston Texans team, a, a, you know, a contender. You know, they, they have the ability to win every week, uh, the defense for the Texans has uh, sneakily been playing about in the top 10 level the last five weeks. So a DVOA. So they're, uh, you know, they're getting better. And what you have is a coach, an interim coach for Houston that's basically interviewing for the job with the way that, you know, how his team plays this season. So obviously he's going to put his best effort in. Meanwhile, you've got the New York Jets uh, bringing out their rookie quarterback uh, after he was you know, on the injured list, uh, and they're probably forcing him back a little bit early because they're in quarterback purgatory with their other two backups in COVID protocol, and they're not even available this week. So it really feels like the Jets are forcing Wilson back too early. Uh, if they actually had one of their backups available, I don't think he'd be playing in this game, and I think it's just a terrible situation by the Jets coaches and their organization as a whole to have him going out there, but they're going to do it, and I think it's going to lead to them getting blown out by this Houston Texans team. I think the defense is going to tee off on, on Wilson, and if he does re-aggravate his injury and has to leave the game, I don't know who their backup quarterback is. So they're going to end up in a situation like the Saints were last season where they've got to chop, uh, trot out a uh, wide receiver, a skill position player in the quarterback position because they don't have anybody else to play quarterback. And so I just think this is just a bad spot for the Jets all the way around. Not to mention, they're a team that's definitely out of the playoff race. Right now, they're more concerned with getting a better draft position. So I, as much as they're going to you know, try to put forth a good effort, I don't think they really have any interest in trying to win these games the rest of the season. So it just... It's just not a good spot for the Jets. I'm going to take the, the Houston Texans with the better quarterback. They're at home. It's under It's under a field goal. I just think that th this is just a bad matchup. Even though these are two, two bad teams, the Jets are just arguably much worse than the Houston Texans. So for my first pick, give me Houston minus two and a half. The second game that I like is the Los Angeles Rams heading out to the Green Bay Packers. Uh, this is a pick 'em, so basically you just got to pick which team is going to win the game. And I just think that the Rams are in a good spot here. The uh, Green Bay Packers have been on a downward trajectory the last couple of weeks with the injuries that they've been sustaining. They've got their bye week uh, coming up next week, and I think they're just going to be happy to try to make it into the bye week uh, without anybody else being seriously injured for the rest of the season. Uh, and hopefully get back healthy after the bye week and try to put together a winning streak that gets them uh, 
into the playoffs and potentially the first seed. But I think that the Rams are also a very desperate team, having lost two games, heading into their bye week, and now they're the healthy team. They're the team that's getting right as far as getting uh, the players that they brought in in free agency acclimated to their roles and the play calling, the playbook for the Rams. And I think that McVay and Stafford are really going to have a good game plan to exploit some of the weaknesses that this Green Bay Packers defense has been hiding, and particularly that Green Bay has been hiding with the play of Aaron Rodgers, who's been basically carrying this team on his back the last few weeks with all the injuries that they've sustained. And we've seen that it's finally caught up with them when they lost last week on the road to a Minnesota Vikings team, even though Rodgers had over 300 yards passing and four touchdowns. So I just think that the Rams, they're, they're in a position where they can't afford to lose another game. They've got to put their best foot forward. It's going to be, you know, all hands go. And I just think that the Green Bay Packers, their injury situation is really gotten worse and worse and worse and it's finally starting to rear its ugly head like we saw last week and I believe we're going to see it again this week uh, that injury for Aaron Rodgers foot can really be an issue with them playing outdoors in Lambeau uh, what's a late start game so it's going to be dark it's going to be cold and that could definitely affect the way he throws the ball and again with all the other injuries to the offensive line they're not going to have Bakhtiari back they just lost their other tackle uh, this is just a bad spot with the way that the Rams are set up to rush the quarterback. And I just think, again, the Rams really need this win. Green Bay is just trying to make it to their uh, bye week next week. And I just think it just sets up well for Los Angeles. So give me the L.A. Rams as a pick em for my second pick. So the third game that I like is the Tampa Bay Bucks minus three. Heading out to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Uh, this is another one of those lines that the sports book is set that's basically asking you to pick the winner. And I'm going to take the better quarterback in this situation. Uh, I was on the Colts last week, but I felt that that was a good situation for their running game and a good situation for their defense. Uh, I don't think they have those same advantages taken on the Bucks. For one, the Bucks have one of the best passing offenses in the league. And I think they're going to be able to exploit this Colts secondary, especially if they have all their weapons available. Mike Evans right now has been on the injury report. I believe he's going to play in this game because I think he understands how important it is for them to get this victory. And I just think that the way that the Tampa Bay offense is set up, that they'll be able to exploit this uh, Colts defense. And if they do that, they could definitely take the Colts out of their uh, offensive strategy, which is to run the ball, which again, the Bucks are the best team against the run right now. And it looks like they should have their key uh, run stopper, Vita Vea, back. And JPP should also be playing. He's on the injury report, but it looks like he's going to be available. If they have all of their defensive players available for Tampa Bay, I certainly think they could take this Colts uh, running game out of its comfort zone. We're certainly not going to see the type of yards that we saw from Jonathan Taylor last week. And if they do that and the Tampa Bay offense is able to put up touchdowns, I think this is just a bad spot for the Colts. And then you're asking Carson Wentz to pass the Colts to a victory. And I just don't trust him to do that. Whenever you've got to depend on Carson Wentz to win you the game, he's going to make a bad choice at a bad time and cost the Colts the game. When they can lean on the running game, that's when they're good. And I just don't think that they're going to be able to do that against this Tampa Bay team. And again, the books have really set these lines up this week to where you basically got to pick the winner. And with Tampa Bay being just minus three, I think they're going to be able to win this game. I think they were a little rusty the last couple of weeks, but they were able to put together some pretty good offensive drives against the New York Giants. Uh, and that win on Monday night. I think that should keep them rolling. And again, as long as they have all their offensive uh, skill position players, I just think they run away with this game in the fourth quarter. So for my third pick, give me Tampa Bay minus three. So the fourth game that I like is the San Francisco 49ers minus three at home taking on the Minnesota Vikings. 
Uh, this is going to be a very important matchup for uh, these two teams as far as whether or not they're going to be in contention for a wild card spot in the playoffs. And I believe that the San Francisco 49ers are going to be the team that gets the victory here. So with it being minus three, again, this is one of those games where the sports book is basically asking you which team you think is going to win this game. And I think the San Francisco 49ers are going to be able to win this game. I know they haven't been good against the spread at home this season or last season for that matter. But I think they're getting healthy at the right time. They've gotten George Kittle back. He really makes Jimmy Garoppolo a better quarterback. He makes the running game better. He makes the passing game better for guys like Debo Samuel because he doesn't allow them to double team. He blocks. He catches. He's a uh, security blanket for the quarterback. I just think he's that important to this offense that now that he's back and he's healthy and productive, this San Francisco offense is just going to be clicking on all cylinders. We saw how Shanahan has really started to emphasize the run game, ball control, use up the clock. Don't ask his defense to be uh, elite. Let his offense control the ball, keep the other team's offense on the sidelines, and you know try to win these games in the fourth quarter. And I think that's going to be a great formula for this week. We're seeing the Minnesota Vikings come in. They've really been on uh, a playoff push the last two weeks. They can't afford to lose any more games. They've really been playing at a great level, but I think it might come all crashing down this week. Uh, they're getting a little bit, a lot, or a lot of credit actually for their last couple of victories: one against the Chargers uh, on the road, and then at home against the Green Bay Packers. But that's a Packers team that's been banged up the last few weeks, so that may not have been the Packers team that we saw earlier in the season. And again, I just think that. San Francisco, as, as though they don't cover the spread very well at home, I think this is where they change that narrative. I believe they're going to come out. They're going to be able to control the ball. They're going to be able to keep the Minnesota Vikings running game at a, uh, you know, a, a minimum and be able to play against these uh, Minnesota Vikings wide receivers. Uh, for the 49ers on defensive side of the ball, they're really starting to get healthy. It looks like they're going to get three of their defensive linemen back all this week. Uh, Kinlaw, uh, D. Ford, and I believe there's one other player that are all scheduled to come off the IR and be available for this Sunday. So you're going to see a much different defense for San Francisco, a much deeper defense for San Francisco, especially against, uh, uh, on the defensive line than what we've seen in previous weeks. And I think that also is another factor that's going to allow them to be able to get the victory in this game by keeping this San Francisco or by keeping this Minnesota running game uh, in control and not allow Kirk Cousins to use the play action pass to get you know the ball downfield to his receivers. So again, with this being a minus three line, what the books are telling you is this is a coin flip game. Who do you think wins this game? I just think that the, the Minnesota Vikings have been on a high the last couple weeks, and they're due for a low. And I think the San Francisco 49ers are due for a win at home against the spread, and they're going to use the same formula they've been using the last couple weeks to uh, use ball control and hopefully get the victory in the fourth quarter. So for my fourth pick, give me San Francisco minus three. So for my fifth pick, I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers, plus four and a half, heading down or over to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Uh, I'm going back to the well with Pittsburgh Steelers. They got the cover last week against the, uh, uh, the Chargers on Monday night. I was sweating that game pretty, pretty seriously. I had pretty much conceded that it was an L in the fourth quarter before they got that uh, special teams punt block. And it just shows the character of this Pittsburgh Steelers team that even though they were down by a significant amount of points, they kept fighting, they kept uh, pushing, and they were able to actually take the lead in that game before, uh, you know, eventually giving up a terrible, like, 70-yard pass to lose that game. But again, 
They were playing with one of their arms tied behind their back. I mean, they had three all-pro defensive players all miss that game last week. Now it's looking like all three of those players should be available this week. We know for sure Minka Fitzpatrick's back. Uh, I believe T.J. Watt has been limited in practice, so we'll see exactly what his status is going to be. And again, Joe Hayden was also limited in practice, so we'll see what his status is going to be. But I believe all three of those players on defense should be back for Pittsburgh. And if they are, I think this defense is going to be much better than they were last week. And they should be able to get the outright victory against this Cincinnati Bengals team that's getting a little bit more credit than maybe they deserve uh, being a four-and-a-half point favorite, even though it's at home. I think that the, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is going to be able to match up well against some of these uh, Cincinnati Bengals wide receivers, particularly Jamar Chase, and keep them in check. Uh, we've seen that the offensive line for Cincinnati still isn't that good. Joe Burrow still getting sacked at an excessive rate, and I think the Pittsburgh Steelers should be able to put pressure on him. As far as the defense for Cincinnati, I think they're getting a little bit more credit than they deserve. They're a middle-of-the-pack defense. They can get pressure on the quarterback. You know, they're all right. But I think that the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers passing game should be able to get some points on the board. Najee Harris, you know, they're really using him in the passing game. I think he's going to have a big day against this Cincinnati Bengals team. And I just like the fact that Tomlin, as a dog on the road, is 70% uh, against the spread. They got the cover for me last week, so I'm going to go back to the well with them this week uh, and, you know, ride that train until uh, until it falls off the tracks, I guess you could say. Uh, with the lines the way they are this week, uh, the books have set these lines for all these games so well that it's really hard to determine who's the favorite and who's the uh, underdog because they're all basically coin flip uh, point spreads. So if you're going to give me over over a field goal, basically four and a half points, which you know, even at four, gives you that extra hook. That four could be a, a key number with the uh, inconsistencies we've seen in extra point kicking this season. So I just like the fact that I'm getting four and a half. This line has already moved to four in the Circa as of Friday, and I just think that this sets up well for the Pittsburgh Steelers to get another outright win. I think Cincinnati might be getting a little bit too much credit for coming off the uh, – by week being rested, but I think Pittsburgh will be just as fine as long as they get all the players back they were missing last week. So for my fifth pick, give me the Pittsburgh Steelers plus four and a half. So those are my five picks for week 12 of the NFL contest. Uh, be sure to check the comments in this uh, for this video, and also uh, I'll be posting any changes to my card at deadmoneymedia.com. Uh, this, this week, uh, there's at least three games, the final three games, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, and Pittsburgh, that are still up in the air as far as being 100% on my card. The first two I'm definitely more confident in, Houston and Los Angeles. But I haven't really changed too many of my picks this season. Uh, last week, I was certainly thinking about switching off of Pittsburgh and Arizona, but I'm glad I didn't. Because I would have been second, you know, I would have been kicking myself, uh, you know, for taking two winners off of my card. So even though I'm kind of up in the air about a few of these decisions, more than likely I'll be sticking with the five games that I've chosen for this video. But once again, just be sure to check in uh, in the comments. I'll be sure to leave any changes there. And uh, you know, other than that, everybody have a safe holiday weekend. I hope everybody made a lot of money on Thanksgiving. And I hope we get to make a lot of money this Sunday. Everybody enjoy this Week 12 NFL slate. And thanks for watching.